Welcome back to PSD Tuts. We've been looking at different ways of extruding, twisting, tapering and bending 3D objects and now we're going to take a look at object inflation. It may not sound like much but it's an enormously powerful way to create 3D objects from flat photographs. Here's a picture of a beetle. It's cut out and you can see if I take the background away it's against transparency and we can turn this beetle into a real rotatable 3D object in just a few seconds. So here's what we do. We make sure that 3D extrusion is selected and we click the Create button. And right away it extrudes this object as a 3D shape. We can click on it and now we can move it around and as we rotate it you can see Yep, it simply extruded that beetle downwards to give it some depth. Now in this case, that's not what we want. Let me move it down a bit. We click on it, we press the V key on the keyboard, and now we get the head-up controls. Let's take this extrude depth down to just about zero. Press V again and we get the second lot of controls, and these are the controls for the cap, for the top of the object. We're going to increase the inflation strength, and we can do that by dragging on here. And as we drag, you can see how the beetle is getting thicker in the middle. Now what's happening is that the thicker the object, the higher the inflation value. We've got two controls here. One is the strength of the inflation and the other one is the angle of the inflation. And if we turn this around, we can see that the angle relates to the angle at which the side comes out of the edge of the object. If we increase this to 90 degrees, then the side comes straight up and we can bring that inflation up again. And we can take that as high as we like. And there is our 3D beetle, created in just a couple of seconds. And you can see it's a real object that we can move around, we can position in 3D space, we can tilt that, we can do whatever we like with this object, it casts a shadow, it's a real 3D form. And it really is as easy as that to make our first inflated 3D object. We can apply the same technique to a number of different objects. But it doesn't work with everything. For example, you might think this bottle would be a good, good candidate. After all, the wide base here should uh, give us a nice wide bottle with a narrow neck. So let's try it. Once again, we'll make a 3D extrusion from it. Let's rotate this around. And once again, we'll set this extrusion down to zero. Press the V key again, let's increase that inflation angle to 90 degrees, and now let's inflate it. And there is the front of our 3D object. By default, a 3D object will inflate just the front and not the back. But we can fix that by going to the Properties panel, and here we can select the Cap tab, and we can tell it to inflate not just the front, but the front and the back. Even having done this, however, as you can see, it's not a terribly convincing 3D object. It looks more like an inflated balloon than a real bottle, and that's because it's bulged out this bottom, it can't make it completely flat, it's on the same thing as the top, and although it's close, it's really not good enough. So it takes a bit of experimentation to work out what is the best kind of object that you can render in 3D by inflation and what doesn't work. As we saw, the beetle worked very well because it had the combination of a thick body and thin legs. Well, what we can do is, having got that beetle as we like it, we can now go to our Shape Preset section in the Properties tab and we can say, save this as a new preset and let's call it Beetle. And there is the thumbnail showing that beetle as a preset. What's the point of that? Well, the point is, if we take another 3D object, such as this lizard, 
we can turn this into our 3D extrusion and rather than going through that process we can simply go to the properties tab select the lizard and let's drag this up a bit so we can see all those presets when we click on the shape preset there is our beetle at the bottom we select that and it has applied that transformation to our lizard we can still modify it of course so if we want to make it a bit deeper we just press V a couple of times and we can increase that inflation strength and there is the lizard as a real 3D object again made very very straightforwardly from that flat photograph we can also use this inflation technique to make 3D objects that we draw from scratch so let's see how that works let's hide this lizard layer and make a new layer and we're going to make a life belt so what I'll do is use the elliptical marquee tool to make a circular selection and I'm holding the option or alt key so I can draw from the center out with that selection made let's choose a very pale gray I don't want pure white here so we can press option backspace on a Mac alt backspace on the PC and we fill that circle with gray we want to take away the middle of this and the easiest way I find to do that is to go into quick mask mode then we can go into free transform scale down that inner circle which is our selection until we get it the size we want it hit enter to apply the transformation leave quick mask mode and there is our smaller selection and we can simply hit delete to get rid of that and let's deselect let's now add in some colored corners on this so we'll go back to the rectangular marquee I'll take one up here and I can use image adjustments and hue and saturation to colorize this selection increase the saturation a lot lower the brightness and there is our nice bright red for our life belt if we want to do the same thing in the opposite corner we can just drag this selection down to that corner and now either hold the option key or alt key down as we select hue and saturation from the menu and that loads the last used dialogue with the settings that we last put into it so we know these are going to be the same finally let's set some dark text and let's add some wording to this we'll take the shapes tool to draw a path and make a circular path that matches the circular shape of our life belt switch to the type tool and now if we click on that path we can type in the word Titanic Now that's obviously very much too small but let's make it bigger let's try 144 point that looks good if we select it again we can now rotate that around and let's make it a little bit bigger still and that fits rather well onto that quadrant and to get that on the other side as well we can simply duplicate that layer and use free transform to turn this around so it fits at the bottom as well we now need to merge all these three layers together so we can select them all and choose merge layers which is just off your screen at the bottom of the layers panel we've got this far let's bring back the 3d panel and go on to create our 3d extrusion we don't need to go through that whole process we can simply go to properties and with our object selected we can choose that beetle preset again and there it is turned into our rather convincing looking life belt once again we need the bottom half of this life belt so let's in the properties panel 
go onto the cap tab and say not just the front but the front and the back and now the texture is mirrored front and back now that's a little bit too deep for a life belt so let's just adjust this inflation value to get the slightly squashed effect that you get on life belts and there it is in just a short time we've created this real 3d object that we can turn around that we can view from any angle and that really is quite remarkable. You can see a faint grey line around the edge of it and the reason we've got that is because our extrusion depth isn't quite on zero. If we take this down that just about gets rid of it. There will always be a very faint line in the join but it's easy to fix that in Photoshop afterwards. Let's now bring back that lizard we were working on earlier select both these layers and merge them together. And now they make a single object. But we can still work on each object independently. We can select the lizard in our 3D panel and we can rotate it. Let's turn it around so it faces the other way. Spin it down and manipulate that so that it appears to be climbing out of the back of this life belt. Now let's select the whole scene and bring this down so that it's going just below that ground plane and we can rotate it back a little bit. And there we have it. We can set this so that it cuts off where it intersects with the ground plane. When we have the whole scene selected, we can check the cross-section button. And you can see this slice going through our object. And we can drag this left and right, and you can see how it chops our object in half. We want to slice not on the x-axis, but on the vertical y-axis. So we can turn this around. Let's bring this down and rotate it. Now you can see this is slicing off the top half of the object. We want to slice the bottom so we can choose to mirror that slicing instead and now we can position it exactly as we want it. And we can keep on messing around with this until we get it exactly as we like it. Once we have it as we want it, we can now hide that plane so that the plane itself doesn't show up. We just have the separated object. What I want to do is to give the impression of this life belt with the lizard floating in some water. So we need to get rid of this shadow that's underneath it. Let's go to the Environment tab and now we can take that shadow opacity down to zero. Now we want to give a suggestion of some translucence to the water as if we can see some of the lizard and the life belt through it. What we can't do is to set our cross section so that it gives us partial transparency. It's either on or off. But there's a way we can fool it. We'll go into the Layers panel and let's duplicate this whole lizard assembly. And we'll move the copy behind the original. Now, in the copy, let's go back to the Properties panel and disable the cross-section so we can see the whole thing. Back in the Layers panel, we can reduce the opacity of the second copy so we can see it faintly behind the full strength original layer. When we now paste in a background we can see our lizard floating in the water. And the fact that we can partially see it underneath gives it that extra amount of realism.
Now, if you want to be fussy at this point, you could say, well, actually, we've got a rather hard edge as a cut-off on here. If this was real water, it would be rippling slightly. And, well, we can sort that out by going onto our lizard layer and adding a layer mask. Layer, layer mask, and reveal all. We can now use the brush tool set to a hard edge brush and we can simply paint those wiggles that we want on the side of this life belt. Or we paint in black, it hides the layer, and so we get more of a realistic look to this edge. And let's just do it inside there as well. And there is our finished illustration. We've created the lizard out of a photograph of a lizard taken from above. We've drawn the life belt from scratch in Photoshop. Altogether, this is really quite a remarkable thing to be able to do.